In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to use MATLAB parallel for loops. Um, now, the syntax is simply a matter of using par4 rather than 4. And in this example, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be creating two random mat matrices, or should I say vectors, and then I'm going to be adding them up and saving them in this, uh, in this array called C. Okay, so just to go through the normal for loop that I have, so it's this little bit, so I have 4, i equals 1 to the entire length of a, I'm going to be adding up a and b, right, element by element. Now, now obviously there's better ways of doing this, but this is just uh, for the sake of an example that I'm doing this. Okay, so, and then I measure the time going, going tick and talk, all right. So for the normal for loop, and I'm going to be doing the exact same thing for the the parallel for loop. Now, what's really interesting is that if you if you look at it, the syntax is exactly the same. So for instead of the par, instead of the four, I, I've written par four. Okay, so that's the only difference there is in in, in using this. But just because I use this doesn't mean uh, doesn't mean that I will be using parallel for loop. So let me let me just run, run this and and show you what I mean. Okay, so now it, t it took me 0.08 of a second for the normal for loop, and it actually took me 1.5 seconds for the parallel for loop. The the reason is um, the parallel for loop's got some overheads, um, and it needs to divide up the work and send it off to the processors. So we got that overhead, and that's why it's taking so long. Um, and also, right now, it's not using the the parallel architecture at all. Now, in my computer, I've got a quad core. So to make sure that you use the those four cores, I need to I need to say MATLAB pull open four. Okay, so if you got if you got a dual core, you'll be using two. But if I if I try to use more than the number of cores that I have, it'll chuck me an error. Okay, so I'm, I have four in my case. So I'm just going to run that. Okay, so I said MATLAB open open four. All right, so say starting MATLAB pull using a local profile, right? It doesn't really matter what it, what that means. Uh, but the point is you need to run that before you can use a parallel for loop. Okay. All right, let me just... Okay, all right, so it did that. Okay, now remember it took me 1.5 seconds to run it in parallel. Now let me run this again and see how see how we go. Okay, it, it, it came down to 0 0.76. All right, um, let me run that one more time just... 0.58. Okay, so usually you need to run it a few times to make get it get it to be a stable running pattern. So basically now it's using the parallel architecture. So I got a speed up of uh, 1.5 divided by 0 0.6, let's say. So two and a half times a speed up by using parallel for loop. Now, if you're asking why should I be using parallel for loop when it's clearly slower than the normal for loop? The idea is to use use the for loop when there's really something computationally intensive, right? So for something like adding up two vectors, that's not that's not that's not computationally intensive. You shouldn't be using uh, parallel for loop. You should be using a normal for loop. But if you are going to be using something a bit more complicated, uh, say matrix division or uh, something really intensive, that's, that's the case where par parallel for loop will definitely have a speed up. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, let me know, but uh, I think that's it. Oh, and one last thing, if you want to stop using the parallel uh, parallel architecture, you need to say MATLAB pool close. All right, so the same way we use MATLAB pool open, right, and set the number of cores, we just need to say MATLAB pool close to finish off the parallel stuff. Uh, and thanks for listening. And if you have questions or comments, let me know. And please do hit subs subscribe.